Uh, now, please welcome Daniel Rowe and my favorite clown, uh, my, my, I mean, my favorite Azure Static Web App PM, Anthony. Hello, guys. How are you? I'm it's doing bad. good. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't do I couldn't the happy birthday again. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing after that thing. I think I watched it in replay when I saw that on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, Daniel Rowe, who's a core contributor on Nux, joining us. Oh. Uh, he's going to go and tell us all about Nux and how to use it with Azure Static Web Apps. You want to take it away, Daniel? Absolutely. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Anthony. I'm talking about uh, Nux, which absolutely uh, we love Azure Static Web Apps, and I'm going to tell you uh, tell you a little bit about why. Uh, if you've not come across Nux, it's a progressive framework for building web applications that's uh, built. Uh, the front end is built in in Vue. Uh, it's, it prioritizes uh, developer experience, so it it has zero effort to start. A single command starts you a uh, Nux application. Um, everything is is configured with best practice. Uh, but you can take full control and configure things as you go. There's a, a huge ecosystem of modules built on top of Nuxt to add features and functionality. Uh, and that's that's been true for, uh, for, for ever since uh, Nuxt version one. We're just about to release Nuxt version three, which is what I'll be demoing uh, today. Uh, but Nuxt is, is really uh, about uh, developer experience uh, and, and all the capability that we can unlock when we remove friction from devs and uh, basically allow creativity to uh, to run run free. Uh, but one of the, the great things that we're looking to unlock in terms of developer experience for Nux3 is uh, universal deployment with zero configuration. Uh, and this is done with a new uh, server called uh, Nitro that we've built for Nux, but which can actually be used for any framework. Uh, and it supports Azure static web apps out of the box, uh, which means you can do really amazing things, I think. Uh, when you come to deploy your Nuxt application or, or another application built uh, with the Nitro uh, framework. Uh, so I've uh, taken the liberty of firing uh, up a little uh, fresh Nuxt application. We've got a dev server uh, running here. It's uh, super minimal. So when you start a new Nuxt app, you get nothing uh, but four uh, key files. Uh, you have your Nuxt config, which is uh, empty to start with, your package JSON, which is pretty uh, lightweight, you'll notice Nuxt is a dev dependency uh, because in fact, as part of the process of building your, your app, either to go on uh, Azure Static Web Apps or if, if you're deploying it somewhere else, Nuxt is actually not needed after that point. It's compiled away. Uh, you'll see there's a TS config. Uh, there's some amazing um, experiences with Nuxt in terms of help for you as you code. And they're all powered by this, uh, this generated TS config that we, we create. Uh, and your, your app.view file, which is your, your central uh, location. Um, and that app.view file is, uh, is what is going to be displayed in this particular application. You can create a pages directory, and uh, each page will turn into a different route in your app. That's uh, one way to, um, to build your app. But in this case, it's pretty simple. Uh, we also have a server, uh, which is powered by this Nitro that I was talking about. So you can create server routes. Uh, just by adding them in the server API folder. So if we have a, a test uh, route here, this is going to be uh, automatically rendered up whenever you hit that API test uh, endpoint. Um, you'll notice uh, as I'm typing that there are quite a lot of things that are just uh, automatically imported for me. So I'm going to be uh, defining an event handler here. Um, and this event handler um, is, is available to my IDE. I have a full type support. Um, and Nuxt, whenever you're actually using these auto imports in your app, knows and injects the imports for you in your code. Uh, so these things aren't actually defined globally. You still get all the, the, uh, uh, the benefit in terms of your code of just importing them where you need them. Um, in this case, this uh, endpoint, um, we're just going to return um, an object, which is going to have uh, a little message. So uh, happy Azure static web anniversary. Um, and we'll uh, just add a couple more uh, messages uh, here uh, and uh, follow us here. 
Um, now, um, th this uh, endpoint is powered by something called H3, which is a new HTTP framework we've built as part of Nuxt, which uh, dramatically simplifies the experience. You don't have to relate to a node response object, for example, uh, and set a header uh, and stringify uh, your JSON response. You can actually just return it as an object, as I've done here. Um, again, it's about getting rid of friction. Uh, we also have something which um, enables us to access that endpoint in, in our app. Um, so we might want to, to use that, um, th that response. In this case, it's not very complex, but you might do something more like accessing a database or performing s some other uh, complex operation. Um, and we can use a, uh, a composable. Um, Nux provides a number of these. Um, you'll be, may be familiar with them if you've been using uh, Vue. Uh, and we can actually just hit that endpoint that we created, that API test endpoint. Uh, on the server side, it will do what's called an, uh, an isomorphic fetch. We won't even hit the network layer. We'll just directly return the result. On the client side, we will hit it as a network request. Uh, and that, that means we can, um, we can save, save some time and, and have a really good um, performant response. Um, you'll see I actually get a full type support on the actual return type of that endpoint. Uh, Nux is able to tell my editor that that is what is going to be returned. Um, so we have a, a default component here. Um, again, uh, with Nux, you can actually see have full um, autocomplete on all the props that component is going to take. In this case, we're just going to uh, pass some, some information. We're going to pass data dot Twitter to the follow Twitter information. We're going to pass the uh, read docs uh, with data dot docs, I think it was. Um, and I think there was something else. Was it GitHub star us on GitHub? Uh, and we'll pass that data dot uh, GitHub. There we go. So we, we've um, created uh, an app. We have a server endpoint. We're rendering that on our front end. Now let's see what it looks like. So if I open up that simple uh, browser and see what we have when we hit localhost 3000, um, we should have our app. And you see that everything has been rendered using that initial server response um, for us. So this is a full stack web app. Um, now, when you actually want to uh, build it um, and ship this into production, uh, uh, Nitro automatically takes care of knowing where you are. So if you're in your Azure Static Web Apps uh, workflow, uh, Nitro can detect that, and it will produce the right kind of output. So it will take all of your static files and stick them in a, uh, in an, in a .output public folder. And it will take all of your server functions, Azure functions, and stick them in a uh, functions folder and produce all the necessary configuration to make sure those work uh, perfectly. Um, now, Nuxt is a hybrid framework. And so you can actually define individual um, uh, capabilities for all of the different routes of your application. So we could say, for example, that our API test route, um, maybe we, we want to have a stale while we validate uh, strategy. Um, and we could actually specifically define that for that route only. We can do the same for, for other um, capabilities. We can say that certain routes will just be generated in advance. Um, others might be uh, dynamically rendered uh, with an Azure function. Um, it's all configurable, um, and it means the whole app is uh, hybrid. You find um, once the build is done, um, we've got that output folder. Uh, so that public folder, that would be directly served uh, by the CDN. Uh, the server folder has those Azure functions, everything that you might need. We can actually uh, test that uh, locally using the uh, SWA CLI. Um, and we can fire up that emulator and actually see what it's going to look like. I'm not going to deploy it today. But you can see the full documentation on, uh, if you go to the Nuxt docs, you can, you can have a look. Uh, and it will direct you and let you know how to, how to set it up. There are only two things you need to, to configure when you set up your, your static web apps workflow in the first place. Um, so we could actually just have a quick look and see the uh, generated uh, uh, static web app. There it is, running. And you get exactly the same experience if you go to a live uh, deployed one. Here's one I deployed earlier. There you go, uh, dynamically rendered on the edge with Nux3 and Azure Static Web Apps. Um, everything that Nux does is optimized for performance and speed. So you'll find if you have a look at that uh, server folder that we actually take all the node modules that are used and we trace them to just the minimal possible um, information. You should see a tiny number of them there. And if you actually have a look at the 
at the size of that folder. Uh, the uh, size is tiny, uh, 625 kilobytes of runtime dependency for your Azure function. And that is to do a full render of your NUPS3 app. But the good news is if you're only hitting the endpoint, uh, perhaps we want for some reason uh, to access that, uh, that endpoint there uh, and hit the uh, test uh, endpoint that we created. Um, that actually isn't going to load any of the dependencies that are needed to render your view application. Only what is needed to render that uh, endpoint because all the code is dynamically imported and required. There's so much more I could say, and I would absolutely love to say, um, but check out um, Nuxt. Um, we have great support for Adex, uh, Adex static web apps, and I would love to see some Nuxt 3 apps going up uh, with an Azure static web apps workflow. That's all from me. That is super amazing. Uh, really happy to see zero config deployment of Nuxt 3 to Azure static web apps. Uh, thanks so much for this, uh, Daniel. Uh, back to you, Rashmi and Frank. Thank you. It was very great, very interesting. I didn't know Nux, so very happy to learn all about that. Pretty cool. Thank you. Nux is a very powerful framework, and I am sure, Frank, wherever you try it, you're going to have one hell of an experience. See? Okay, pardon my language, but yeah. <laughs> Another thing on my uh, to-do list. Thank you, guys. Thank you so um, much, Daniel. And yeah, here you find the link to go explore Nox and make sure that you try and you let Daniel as well as the Static Web Apps team know how your experience was with Nox. Thank you so much once again, Anthony and Daniel.